Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about operational amplifiers, known simply as op amps for short. Uh, up to this point, we have been making circuits using passive components, which can be used to make things like filters and other sorts of circuits. But they're limited by a, a fundamental issue, which is you can't amplify the amount of power going through a uh, NRLC circuit or a, a circuit composed of passive components. And in fact, op amps are the most common element used for manipulating analog signals because they are known as active components, which means that they they have a separate power supply which can be used to augment, amplify, or in, in, increase the amount of power in a given circuit. Now, an op amp, which we generally draw with a triangle like this, is a two input, one output device. And basically, you have an one input, which is known as the non-inverting input, which is uh, designated with a plus sign, and a second input, which is the inverting input, which is designated with the minus sign. And basically, the op amp takes the difference between the input and the output and multiplies it by some gain, which we'll call G, and it produces some voltage. So we'll write V plus, and we'll write V minus here, oops, V minus. And basically, the output, V out, is equal to G, the gain, times V plus minus V minus. Now, for the sake of completeness, we'll add two more connections. One is the positive voltage supply, and one is the negative voltage supply. And these are often left out on electronics diagrams, but, of course, the op amp won't function at all if you don't provide it with the, uh, with, with the positive and minus uh, and negative power supplies. This is where the extra current is drawn from in order to produce the large gain that is seen at the output voltage. Now, most op amps are not used in a open loop configuration like we see here. They're almost always used in a closed loop configuration where the output voltage is fed back um, possibly through some resistors to the inverting terminal, uh, the inverting input terminal. And what this does is it allows us to calculate using um, standard formulas what the actual, or allows us to adjust the gain of the, of the uh, op amp by putting in resistors and uh, other components as necessary. Now for real op amps, of course, the, um, the equations to calculate the exact gain and the exact output voltage are, are rather complex, but in general, we can use an idealized operational amplifier and in doing so that gives us a very good approximation of what the behavior of the op amp will be and then later on you can go and calculate um, what the second order effects are by using non-ideal components. So for an ideal op amp we assume three things. One is that the, in, that the, the gain G in the open loop circuit is infinite. The second one is that there is actually no input current. And what I mean is <clears throat> when uh, a voltage is being supplied at uh, the V plus or the V minus terminals here or here, we assume that, that none of the current actually goes into the op amp. In fact, a very small amount goes into the op amp, but there's a very high impedance on the order of mega ohms impedance. So it's not very much current at all. And it, and it greatly simplifies the, uh, the calculations that we're going to do in a minute here if we assume that. We also assume no output impedance, meaning that um, whatever is coming out of, the, uh, out of the operational amplifier, VO, is not affected by um, downstream resistances and, uh, and, and such. So when we do this, we end up with what's known as the two golden rules of ideal operational amplifiers. So the golden rules. The first one 
is that the inputs draw no current. That was one of our assumptions before for an ideal amplifier, so that's not a, a particularly uh, novel idea, but it will be useful to, to, to state it as a, the golden rule. And the second one is that when connected with negative feedback, so when the output is connected back to the inverting um, input on the op amp, and there may be some feedback circuitry involved here, that the, the op amp will do whatever is necessary to make the two inputs, v, the, the inputs at V minus and V plus, the same. Now, why would that be? Let's say that, that we have uh, an op amp as shown, and we have a, a, an input V plus going in and an input V minus going in. There, I've magically reconfigured it for you. Um, so let's say that V plus is a little bit more than V minus. What that means is that if we assume an infinite gain that um, the output will be very large, in fact infinite, but, but it'll be very large. And as it comes through the feedback loop, then um, it will increase the amount of voltage going into the V minus terminal. And basically, the, this will keep, in, the, the V out will continue to increase until there is no difference between the V minus and the V plus, because anytime there's a difference between the V minus and the V plus, it's amplified infinitely or very greatly um, to compensate for that. So here we have an op amp configured in a non-inverting amplifier circuit. And basically what happens is that the negative terminal is connected to ground through a resistor Ri. The voltage in, V in, is connected to the positive terminal. Uh, that's the voltage that we're interested in, in amplifying. And V out is connected back through to the negative terminal through some feedback resistor RF. I've also drawn in the positive and the negative voltage supplies to, to, be, to be thorough in this case. Now if we use the golden rules, we can, we can analyze this circuit. Pretty, it's pretty straightforward to analyze this circuit. The first golden rule is that there is no current flowing in, into the op amp input terminals. If that's the case, then we see that all of the current, that there's, that there's a large voltage at V out, and there, that will cause a current to go through RF and then also through RI out through to the, to the ground. The second golden rule tells us that the op amp will change V out however it needs to do that so that the two so the voltages at the two input terminals will be the same and so that means that the voltage at this node here will be equal to v in now if you are if you look at this uh, pretty closely you'll note that what we have um, in the top part of the circuit here is simply a a voltage divider so if we just look at this part of the circuit, we can write it as follows. We can write V out with a resistor connected to RF and voltage here V in, equivalent voltage V in. We're not actually supplying it there, but that's the equivalent voltage. And another uh, resistor RI and that's connected to ground. So we know that because the current um, through RF has to be the same as the current through RI, we can write this as V out minus um, V in over RF, where we've just taken V equals IR and found that I equals V over R. 
is equal to the, the current flowing through the second resistor, which is just going to be the difference in voltage, V in minus ground, which in this case is zero, over the resistance Ri. We can um, manipulate this. We can multiply Rf to the other side and take V into the other side, and we get V out minus V in over V in is equal to Rf over Ri, which with a little more manipulation shows us that the ratio of, of V out to V in, which is just our gain, is equal to 1 plus Rf over Ri. So for an ideal op-amp circuit, we see uh, wired in a, uh, a non-inverting uh, amplification um, circuit, we see that the gain is equal to 1 plus the ratio of the resistors Rf to Ri. So in the next video, we'll see how the gain of an inverting amplifier is affected by the, the resistance the resistances in the feedback loop.